Hello, hello, and welcome to another Thousand Best TV video. Moto Guzzi has brought back the Stelvio, and I have the pleasure of riding it here in Spain for the first time. So, if you're interested, stay tuned. It has to be said that it is becoming more and more modern to bring old names back into the game. Honda did it recently with the Transalp, Moto Guzzi with the Stelvio which was discontinued in 2016 and now 8 years later we have a Moto Guzzi Stelvio once again. With the engine from the V100 Mandelo which we saw last year. That means the first liquid cooled engine from Moto Guzzi, a V2 with 1042cc which delivers 115 horsepower, available at 8,800 RPM and 105 Newton meters of torque at 6,750 RPM. These performance data are unchanged, but the engine has been revised compared to the previous year, namely the clutch is new, the gearbox has been revised and the quick shifter, which is available as an option. These innovations, these updates are also available for the Mandalo, so the engine will be identical in the new model year and the performance data will also be identical. And the engine is, as befits a Moto Guzzi, not only highly visible, but offers a really pleasant sound, a sonorous sound that is immediately audible when starting up. The gearbox shifts really harmoniously, really smoothly. The motorbike looks great and the engine rides really, really well. It's powerful from the bottom end, it's always on the throttle, so these winding country roads that we have in the Spanish hinterland of Almeria are good, very good for this bike. It really feels in its element. But we don't have a sports adventure bike here, we have a touring adventure bike with a 19-inch front wheel and a 17-inch rear wheel. The whole thing is designed for more rigidity. The frame now has four mounting points compared to the 12 and the swing arm has also been revised. It is now stiffer, more resistant and also a little thicker. The Mandelo will always get this, uh, not because it needs it, but simply because Moto Guzzi does not want to produce two different swing arms. It takes a bit of a steering command to get into the bend, but the whole thing is then very, very playful and harmonious. I'll show you the riding position in a moment. It's a bit different to some uh, touring adventure bikes. You're a little further away, which means that if you're not too tall, you're leaning a little further forwards. It is a bit of a crossover bike in my opinion, but you have a nice wide handlebar and it's really playful when cornering. With my height of a meter and 70 centimeters, the knee angle is very, very good. And I think even tall people have no problem at all. Of course, you sit a bit more inside the bike than perhaps on these hardcore um, adventure bikes. But the Stelvio isn't really a hardcore enduro bike with its 170 millimeters front and rear suspension travel. At the front, you have a sax upside down fork with a 46 millimeter diameter. The rebound and preload are both adjustable. At the rear, the monoshock suspension from Kayaba is also adjustable in rebound and preload. And the preload can be adjusted with a practical knob. And in my opinion, the suspension is more on the harder side more on the stiffer side, on the sportier side. So as we were riding, it's just right if you're doing fast cornering. If you're perhaps riding a bit more off-road, then you might want to adjust the rebound a bit more and soften it. But in principle, I see the suspension as being on the sportier side. And a motorbike can also move really sportily. It is also very, very well equipped from the factory. We have an electronically adjustable windshield with a range of 70 millimeters simply at the touch of a button that works up to 150 kilometers an hour. I think if you're traveling faster than 150, you should be looking at the road anyway 
and concentrate more on riding and not necessarily on adjusting the windscreen. And the windscreen is really good. Everyone is sure to find the right position, the right height. Uh, the weather protection with the handguards is also really good. It was very, very windy here today. Uh, partly we were up in the mountains and you were always uh, still very, very well protected on your upper body. We have the same 5 inch TFT color display and everything is very, very easy to read. The menu navigation is intuitive with the buttons on the left handlebar. There's also a button on the right for the respective riding modes. We have five different riding modes, road, touring, rain, sport and off-road. And then there is also a freely configurable user mode. And these riding modes differ in terms of throttle response, engine braking, traction control intensity and ABS. Let's talk about the traction control and ABS. We have an IMU here. This means we have cornering ABS and lean angle dependent traction control. Naturally, it regulates most gently in off-road mode and most strongly in rain mode. Now let's talk about the off-road mode. This has what is known as off-road ABS, which means that the ABS on the rear wheel is always deactivated, which is good so that you can also lock the rear wheel. And you can also deactivate the ABS completely in off-road mode and uh, only in off-road mode. Um, so you can also uh, deactivate it on the front wheel. However, if, if you switch off the ignition and then switch, the by, uh, switch it on again, the front wheel ABS will be reactivated. However, you are also repeatedly informed in the cockpit of the deactivated ABS, even in off-road mode. It works very, very well. The riding modes are also well set up. In other words, you can really feel the difference between the individual riding modes. In sport mode, it's really straight to the point. All modes have the same performance. Sport mode, obviously, has the most aggressive throttle response, rain the least. So nothing changes uh, overall in terms of the 115 um, horsepower. But as I said, the throttle response and engine braking are always tuned differently to the respective uh, modes and you can really feel that. Now there are two variants of this Stelvio, the standard model and the model with the PFF radar system. We have a radar sensor at the front and rear. On the one hand we have a warning system at the front. If you ride too close to another vehicle that is traveling slower, slower, there is a visual and an acoustic warning signal and there is also a warning signal to the rear, uh, a blind spot assistance and a lane change assistance. A light in the rear view mirror indicates whether a vehicle is in the blind spot or whether another vehicle is approaching when you want to change lanes. If you're riding in a staggered group like we are, it lights up quite often, but this light is not so dominant uh, that it is really distracting. It is a real safety feature. In the future, there will also be ad adaptive cruise control for the Stelvios that have this PFF system, a radar controlled cruise control. Our model doesn't have that yet. We still have classic cruise control, but that can be retrofitted. You can order it as an accessory. What you can't do is take the standard model and have the radar retrofitted. That is not possible. So you really have to decide beforehand whether you need to have the radar on board. I think it's a marvelous safety feature, especially this lane change assistant and the blind spot assistant. It's a fun gimmick. We also rode a small gravel section, nothing exciting, just a few meters to get a feel for how the bike behaves on gravel. And yes, it has to be said that the suspension is good, it irons the bumps out, but of course the Stelvio is not really an enduro bike. I see it more as an adventure bike um, with the option of turning right or left into a gravel track and having some fun. The 170 mm suspension travel is sufficient for this because it's not a light motorbike either. At 246 kilograms with a full tank of petrol, it's quite a thing. And everyone has to decide for themselves to what extent they want to travel on unpaved roads. But you can definitely do it. If you do it regularly, then I would say install different foot pegs. You don't really have that grip uh, when standing. But overall, I think the bike is more at home on the road. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a good road or a bad road, because the suspension, like I said, irons out bumps really, really well. The tire that the Stelvio comes with as standard is the Michelin Anarchy Adventure. And uh, that's a great tire for an occasional gravel, gravel excursion. In my opinion, this is a good 80-20 tire that also has great rain performance. The seat height is quite moderate at 830 millimeters. The seat is very, very comfortable, so it doesn't hurt even after a whole day on it. 
The quick shifter is unfortunately not standard, it's an option, but it works really well, especially when you're riding fast. And what I also noticed is that normally there are either quick shifters where you can shift up and down with both the throttle open and closed, or that you can only shift up with the throttle open and down with the throttle closed. But with this one, you can also downshift with the throttle wide open, but not upshift with it closed. So that's a special feature of this quick shifter. I've never seen it like this before, but it works really well. Unfortunately, it doesn't come as standard. The payload of 210 kilos is decent. Everyone can work out for themselves whether that's enough or with a pillion and luggage or not. I think it will definitely be enough for most people. The bike is also powerful enough to be ridden by two people with luggage. The service interval is 12,000 kilometers or once a year, so that's fine too. We have a 21 liter tank which will definitely get us a good 350 to maybe 400 kilometers. In any case, I've really enjoyed what we have ridden so far. I'm already looking forward to continuing after the lunch break. And when we get back to the hotel, I'll get back to you with my conclusion. So we're back at the hotel. At the end, we had a stretch on the beach and the Stelvio more or less mastered this with uh, great expertise. If you want to ride it off-road more often, you should definitely replace the footrests. The pillion footrests are bolted on, however they also have a supporting function for the exhaust. So if something happens there it might be a bit more expensive. But I would say it's now time for my conclusion. The Stelvio is sportier than I originally thought it would be. On the one hand this is definitely due to the powerful high torque engine with its strong character, which is always a good thing. On the other hand it is certainly also due to the rather firm suspension. In other words, for an adventure bike, the suspension is rather stiff and leans more into a sporty direction. Unlike the V100 Mandello, which has an S version with electronic suspension, this option is not offered for the Stelvio. However, I can well imagine that this might follow in a year or two, because there will certainly be a clientele for an electronic suspension for the Stelvio. Let's now talk about the prices. The standard model costs 16,390 US dollars in the US, the PFF model about a grand more. Uh, it is available in two colors, this uh, Nero Vulcano with more gray-black and then there's the Giallo Savanna. If I now ask myself what the direct competitors of the Stelvio are, then it's probably the Suzuki V-Strom uh, 1050. Uh, with the 19 inch uh, front wheel, the Ducati Multistrada V2S, the Tiger 900 GT Pro, the new Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports which also has a 19 inch front wheel but significantly more suspension travel and also an electronic suspension. But it is also in a different price range. Oh and also a Yamaha Tracer 9 which for me is simply an adventure bike that goes a bit into the crossover area because it is very very sporty to ride. I've already said it, the real hardcore faction when it comes to off-road riding will probably not go for the Stelvio. I really enjoyed testing this bike, if you liked the video I'd be delighted if you gave it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below whether you would like to test ride the Gucci Stelvio, whether you perhaps or have already ordered one, I'd be really interested to hear about it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and activate the bell so you don't miss our videos in the future. And now I say ciao from Spain.